Hi, in this video, we're going to learn how we can get input from a user to control commands in our code. To write programs that give users the ability to interact with and control parts of our code, we can use the command input. To save the input that the user gave, we assign it to a variable. We type the name of our variable followed by an equal sign. Instead of entering a value for the variable ourselves, we use the command input followed by a set of parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we write the text prompt that we want the users to see inside quotation marks. In this code, we are asking the user to determine what color our circle should be. We've named the variable color choice and are asking the question, what color should the circle be? We are then using this variable's value to assign a color to Tracy before she draws the circle. Just a quick side note, we're using the variable named color choice instead of just color because color is a reserved word in Python, so it cannot be used as a variable name. Because there is already a command using the word color, we need to choose something else for our variable. When we run this code, the user will see the text prompt and will be able to type in an answer. The user's answer of green is given as an argument to the color command. Tracy then changes her color to green and draws the circle. If we try to use the input command to get a number from the user and use it as a number in our code, Tracy will give us an error. This is because Tracy reads everything a user enters as a word by default. It's very simple to change a user's input to be read as a number by using the command int. All we need to do is surround our entire input command by the term int and place parentheses around it. You'll notice two closed parentheses at the end of the phrase. This is because we open two parentheses throughout our phrase, so we need to make sure to close both of them or Tracy will respond with an error. In this code, we want the user to tell us what the radius of the circle should be, so we ask the question, what is the circle's radius, and surround it with both the input and int commands. You also may notice that we're changing the value of the user input in the forward command. We can alter user input just as we would a variable's value. The output of our code is a circle with a radius that was specified by the user. Tracy then moves forward the diameter of the circle. Let's take a look at how we can use user input in Tracy programs. In this example, we want Tracy to draw the same line with hash marks as in the last lesson, but this time we want to ask the user for the thickness of the marks and what color each mark should be. We already have much of our code written from the last lesson, but we need to include some user input. Let's first tackle the pen size. After Tracy gets to the starting position, I'll add in a call for user input. I'll save their input as a variable named mark thickness. And I need to use their answer as a number, so I'll write int input what is the thickness of the marks? 1 to 20. I added in a range of numbers so the user knows what I'm expecting. I also added in a space before my last quotation mark. This is so that a space will exist between my text prompt and the user's answer. We want to use this thickness value to control the pen size of the hash marks in my function. So I'll write pen size mark thickness. And at the end of the hash marks, I want her to change her pen size back to one. I also need to ask the user for a color before I call my draw hash mark function each time the loop repeats. So let's write color choice equals input because I don't need this to be a number. What color should this mark be? Now I want to change Tracy's color before she draws the mark. So I'm going to go to my function and write in color, color choice, and I want to change the color back to black before she draws the line again. Let's see if this works. The thickness of 15, let's say the first one should be red, blue, green, yellow. Awesome! In this lesson, we learned how to get input from a user and how to change input from a word to a number. Refer to the example we went through to help you collect user input to solve some Tracy challenges of your own. 